One round, fire for effect. Welcome back everyone, it's me Matt, I really appreciate you stopping by on today's video. We are once again talking about my own trade, the artillery, specifically today though, the British Army Artillery's L118 light gun, the 105mm air mobile beast. This gun really has quite a lot of capability in the modern battlefield, and a lot of people do tell me, Matt, there's no requirement for light guns anymore, it's too small of a caliber, and how wrong you are. Unfortunately, uh, for those that continue to spout this kind of thing, they have no true understanding as to why the light gun is so, so important on the battlefield. And the L118 is definitely no exception to that. It's an impressive little gun that can provide a lot of fire support to just about any part of the battle group, including airborne forces and commando regiments of the armed forces of the UK. The light gun was designed and continues to evolve to the British needs. They have used it on operations on four continents and trained with it from the Arctic to the equator. About 1,200 light guns have been provided to soldiers and marines about 20 different countries in total, including licensed productions in Australia and the United States. There are, however, two specific versions, and some of you may be a little bit confused as to why you're seeing the Americans use the same kind of gun. The two versions are the L118, or the real thing, and the L119, which is the M119 in the United States service. Although called a gun by the UK, both versions have been characterized as howitzers, which are varying propelling charges of a high angle fire capability with a comparatively high muzzle velocity and long barrel length. Now, the L118 does have a rather interesting history, and there is a ton of information about how it came to be. But the basic simplicity of the gun coming to be was that in the 1950s, NATO had agreed that the 105mm was to be the standard caliber, but it did not define its ballistics and other characteristics. And it's a widely held misconception that there is a quote, NATO standard 105mm, but there really was no such thing back then. This stopped the UK working on a new 88mm field gun, as well as the UK and US designs for studies of the 110mm guns. The UK recognised the deficiencies of the widely used US 1935 pattern 105mm ammunition and switched efforts to a new 105mm round, which may have been a scaled up version of the new 88mm round. However, the clock was ticking and they needed a new gun very quickly. It was required to be very lightweight, and it was essential for what they needed. And the only option at the time was Otto Malera's 105-14 Model 56 Mountain Howitzer. It was adopted as the 105mm Pack Howitzer L5 or L10 Ordnance in 1959 and towed by a 3 quarter ton Land Rover. It entered service in 1961 and was first used in action in 1962, mopping up after the Brunei Revolt. Meanwhile, development of a self-propelled replacement for the 25-pounder had started. This 105mm gun was the self-propelled L109 Abbott, known as the L13 Ordnance and primarily called the Abbott self-propelled gun. This started trials in 1962. It used entirely new ammunition families officially designated as the 105mm Field or 105mm FD, but often called Abbott ammunition. The Mark II being the real thing, which was the Mark I using the new reduced cartridge and the old 1935 pattern shell. Both cartridges used an electrical, not percussion primer. In the UK service, 1935 pattern, i.e. US 105mm M1 rounds, were called the 105mm How and avoided confusion with the 105mm Tank. Now, consideration for the UK requirement for a new howitzer was the Pack Howitzer L5 replacement, and this started almost immediately after it entered service in 1963. The final version of the General Staff Requirement 3058 for a lightweight close port weapon system was formally approved in 1965. The title was soon changed to 105mm Light Gun. Design and development by the Guns Division of the Royal Armament Research and Development Establishment at Fort Halstead in Kent then started leading the trials in 1968. Development trials of the L118 light gun or L19 ordnance using the 105mm Mark II ammunition was completed by 1969. 
The accepted design in 1970 had a fighting weight of 1,860 kilograms. The GSR had estimated 250 of these guns were to enter for UK service, on a high side actually for about 20 batteries of various sizes. However, actual acquisition was about 14 batteries, but there have been a lot more further ordered since 1982 and 83 after the campaign in the Falkland Islands. In 2005, the UK stocks were 126 L118 guns with 130 spare barrels and 16 L118 saluting guns. The weapon was officially adopted into service in 1975, to which production followed by the Royal Ordnance Factory in Nottingham. The first British artillery units received their new guns in 1976, and within time the weapon came simply known as the light gun. The L118 makes use of various 105mm projectiles which are inserted into a vertical sliding breech. The firing system is electrically actuated, not primer actuated, while the weapon relies on a hydromatic recoil system to counter the inherently violent forces when firing a rather large 105mm shell. At its core, the weapon is of conventional design and layout, consisting of the main gun barrel with attached breech facility, sighting equipment and the carriage unit. The carriage is of box trail configuration and allows the gun to be fired with the wheels upright in traditional sense or folded down. Unlike my Canadian C3 105mm howitzer, the L118 trail assembly is manufactured from corrosion resistant steel formed into a curved tube giving the gun its characteristic bow configuration. This extremely stiff structure enables very quick deployment in comparison with the traditional trail comprising of a pair of open legs, hinged about a lower carriage, and forms a natural boundary within which the breech operator and loader stand, maintaining a very high rate of fire at all elevations with this configuration. The light gun can be lifted in a ready to fire position by a range of medium lift helicopters for light helicopters such as the Bell and can be dismantled into two parts and lifted as a split load. Both the UK and US authorities have extensively approved the light gun for all altitude drops including low altitude parachute extraction system or LAPES. Reliability of this system is important, the gun really does need to be thrown just about anywhere and continue going. The 105mm light gun has proven itself in some of the most demanding tests and conditions and even combat situations around the world. In US type classification testing, 6 light guns fired a total of 15,819 rounds exceeding the US reliability requirement by 163%. In combat with the British Army, 5 batteries of 105mm light guns were fired in excess of 17,000 rounds in support of infantry and commando brigades with 6,000 rounds fired in the last 24 hours of the assault. During the intense period, only one gun went out of action and was repaired in the field and became fully operational again. The light gun can also operate in mountainous conditions as demonstrated recently by 4-5 Commando at 10,000 feet in Afghanistan, and I can tell you first hand that these guns supported myself in Afghanistan and my goodness I am so glad that they were behind us supporting us whilst we were on deployment. The gun itself comprises of a one piece forged barrel of 30 caliber or 3.2 meters length and a manually operated breech. The breech operates using a vertically sliding breech block opposed to the American slide left to right block. This is the similar block that we use in the Canadian Armed Forces with the C3. Gas obturation, which is basically the sealing of gases behind the projectile, is provided by the brass cartridge cage of the ammunition system. The ammunition system for the UK variant L118 light gun uses the electrical primers and the L119 uses a percussion primer in the base of the cartridge case. To fire the gun, a firing handle located to the left hand side of the breech is pulled. The firing gear is fully waterproofed, and at the muzzle end of the ordnance is a forged steel multi baffle muzzle brake that reduces the firing impulse to the gun carriage, and it can easily be removed for cleaning. I say easily, but depending on the number of rounds you put through, it's not so easy. The cradle is manufactured very, very stiff, and of course, very lightweight with its open structure. It is very good being able to reduce the recoil, and different spades can actually be installed on the gun depending on the terrain or features that it's being used upon. Whether it be ice, mud, or snow, different spades can be installed to allow it to react differently to the way in which the gun is fired and bed the gun into its firing position. The weapon system has gone through many different upgrade packages to bring it into the modern day artillery requirement of the British Army. The indirect and direct sighting system and controls are operated by the layer while seated, and there is also a direct fire night sight available if required. However, today the gun system does use the digital fire control system which dramatically improves coming into action times where conventional firing and sighting systems normally take around 11 minutes to get for the gun to be ready. Fire controlling of the gun is done within normally 2 minutes using this digital fire control unit. 
The Hall & Watts artillery sighting system with proven reliability and ease of operation is in service on the L118 and L119 guns. The artillery sighting system is very accurate, battle proven and the sighting system was designed to be used with just about any field gun. Specifically though, this system was designed for the L118 and L119. The automated tactical artillery control system provides automated computerized fire support for the L118. This is a modular, lightweight, accurate navigation system to allow the gun to point exactly where it needs to go. Using the Kierfort monolithic ring laser gyro, the system calculates velocity, position, heading and altitude all automatically. The Sagem CM3LR Long Range Compact Military 3 sensor site has a cool thermal day and LRF sensor in a single unit. This advanced image and processing function improves awareness and engagement ranges and high performance integrated solutions for direct firing using the RWS AFV howitzer system. This basically means that it has the same kind of technology that the self-propelled guns have if they have to put the guns into direct fire capability. The gun is towable on primary roads and across rough terrain. The gun travels in the unfolded mode by securing the barrel rigidly to the trail. The platform is carried on top of the trail during travel. For long distances, the upper structure can be fully rotated 180 degrees to give a compact travelling configuration for high-speed towing on primary roads, or for palletization and aerial delivery for transport aircraft. The complete conversion takes less than one minute. Any light utility vehicle or truck, including the Land Rover, Pinsgauer, Supercar and Humvee can tow the light gun. The recoil system comprises of a hydraulic recoil brake and hydropneumatic recuperator. The recoil brake brings the recoiling mass to rest by throttling oil through a variable orifice or a rotating valve arrangement. A pair of compensating tubes allow for volume changes in the system during the recoil and runout stroke and allow the oil to expand under the influence of heat. The recuperator returns the gun to the fully runout position after firing from any angle of elevation, and the recoil system uses a cutoff gear to decrease the length of recoil at high angles of elevation. Consequently, there is no requirement to dig a recoil pit for the gun. The gun compensates for it as you adjust. The balancing gear maintains a balance of the gun's elevation parts throughout all angles of elevation. This ensures that the elevating handwheel loads are kept at a manageable level. The system uses a pair of springs on each side of the gun. The system is extremely reliable and does not require any adjustment during ambient temperature changes. What that basically means is, no matter where the gun goes up and down, your handle for cranking it goes in the same position and the assistance to actually you cranking the gun is increased significantly with those two large springs. Now let's talk about ammunition. The L118 ammunition or 105mm HE L31 is a high explosive round designed for the L18 light gun specifically and has a high finished steel body filled with RDX TNT. The lethality is approximately 25% greater than that of the US M1 shell with higher consistency of range and accuracy. A maximum range of 17.2km using the L36 charge super can be fired from this gun. The L35 cartridge propelling designed for this gun is actually comprising of a brass cartridge case, electric igniter and 5 incremental charges which give a range of up to 15.3km at increments of 5. 105mm L52 smoke RP was the new 105mm red phosphorus or bispectral screening smoke shell that has the new IM exploder and is environmentally friendly somewhat. Cost effectiveness of the L31 HE round fired from the light gun has a range of around 65% greater of that of the M1 HE round. Thus, fewer assets are required on the battlefield for the same area of coverage and fewer rounds of ammunition are required to achieve the desired targeting effect, thereby reducing the cost of ammunition procurement, storage, transportation and management with that of the 105mm artillery system of its type. The L119 ammunition was a light gun ammunition designed for M1 ammunition. All projectiles of the semi-fixed type are free fit to the cartridge case. The arrangement facilitates the adjustment of flexible multi-stage charge systems just prior to loading, enabling ranges of between 1.8km and 11.4km with the M1 family to be achieved. The charges are contained in a brass cartridge case which also provides obturation. A wide variety of fuses are also available. The existing range of M1 ammunition is both cost effective and readily available from many sources worldwide. The full range of M1 ammunition can be used by the L119 for both operational and training purposes. In addition, the US has rocket assisted and bomblet rounds specifically designed for the L119 gun. For the L118 though, they do rely upon the L35 cartridge which does give a little bit more firepower and distance in terms of firing. 
The L118 can also be seen as an adaptation into frontline services within the armies of Australia and New Zealand, to which the Aussies call it the Hamel Gun, and produce the type of it under licence. The L118 continues to be a formidable light gun for British Armed Forces and countries around the world. It has served itself very, very well and provided massive amounts of fire support in different conflicts around the world. Primarily for me, in support of Afghanistan, I have to say that having these things behind me really did give me a sense of pride and a sense of encouragement to know that the artillery was covering us when we were going into compounds or when we were patrolling into the different areas of Helmand Province. In terms of the Falkland Islands, which, you know, I have visited, the number of people I've spoke to who are thankful for having these guns on their side is, you know, really a testament to how well this gun performs. I have to admit, I would love as a gunner right now in my reserve career be able to fire this gun, a little bit more modernized than the C3, but at the end of the day, they're still a howitzer, they still do the same thing, they push a projectile downrange, whether it's electronically or manually by the Mark I eyeball, we still do the same thing in the artillery, and that is providing indirect and direct fire support to the All Arms Battle Group. So, you know, seeing these guns in action really does bring a bit of a tear to my eye because they are an incredible piece of hardware that actually are doing a lot of important jobs when it comes to the All Arms Battle and providing support to the Battle Group. So, I hope you learned a little bit about this weapon system, and if you did enjoy the video, please leave me a like, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, you can also click on the little bell by the subscribe button there to be notified of any upcoming videos I make, so make sure you do that, you'll be notified of uh, when I produce new content. And also, if you want to support my channel, you can go check out my Patreon account uh, or support through my PayPal in the description box below. There's also my Facebook there, my merchandise store, etc. So go check it out. I appreciate you stopping by today, folks. Have a wonderful day. All the best. Bye-bye.